These animations illustrate our view of how the renin-angiotensin aldosterone work, system works to maintain blood pressure. First, we will discuss how the system maintains a normal level of blood pressure. Then we will illustrate how suppression of renin secretion works to slow the development of high blood pressure when patients retain excessive amounts of salt. Then we show how high blood pressure develops when the kidneys retain even greater amounts of salt at a time when renal renin secretion has been maximally suppressed. In other words, when the buffer capacity of the renin angiotensin system has been exhausted. Finally, we illustrate how sodium retention and expansion of extracellular fluid volume can lead to renin-dependent hypertension if it occurs in patients who have ischemic nephrons that cannot shut off their renin secretion appropriately. Renin is normally secreted from the kidneys at such a rate that it sustains a normal level of blood pressure. Plasma renin maintains blood pressure by cleaving angiotensin 1 from plasma angiotensinogen. Angiotensin 1 is inactive, but it is quickly converted to angiotensin 2 by converting enzyme, a widely distributed enzyme. Angiotensin 2 quickly raises blood pressure by constricting the arterioles. At the same time, it increases aldosterone secretion from the adrenals. Aldosterone, in turn, increases the rate of sodium reabsorption by the kidneys. This would increase the concentration of sodium in extracellular fluids, but the kidneys react by retaining more water, thereby restoring the extracellular sodium concentration, but at the same time increasing the extracellular fluid volume, or the arterial sodium volume status, as illustrated on this slide. The effect, this effect of aldosterone also works to increase arterial blood pressure. However, if blood pressure becomes too high, it exerts a negative feedback effect on the kidneys and suppresses renin secretion by maintaining blood pressure at normal levels over the, thereby maintaining blood pressure at normal levels over the long term. Low renin normotension is a forerunner of low renin hypertension. The yellow inserts indicate that something has happened to make the kidneys retain more sodium than usual. That causes an increase in arterial sodium volume. This would result in an increase in arterial blood pressure, but the increase in pressure exerts a negative feedback on the kidneys, causing renin secretion to fall. The fall in plasma renin activity leads to a fall in plasma angiotensin II, and that in turn prevents blood pressure from rising over the long term. Thus, suppression of the activity of the renin angiotensin system buffers the effect of any increase in extracellular fluid volume and prevents blood pressure from rising. But blood pressure does not stay at normal levels when the kidneys retain even more sodium. The arterial sodium volume increases even more but the higher arterial pressure cannot exert a greater negative feedback effect on renin secretion because renin secretion is maximally suppressed. Arterial pressure rises, and that, in our view, is how low renin hypertension develops. But how does renin-dependent hypertension develop? Renal nephrons are constantly working together to sustain an adequate level of glomerular filtration rate. This is accomplished in part by changing the amount of renin in the circulation. To that end, each nephron increases its secretion rate of renin when blood pressure falls and decreases its secretion rate of renin when blood pressure rises. The overall rate of renin secretion, and thus the circulating PRA level, is the integrated sum of all of the renin secreted from all of the nephrons. In hypertensive patients, individual afferent arterioles often become ischemic, resulting in a fall in their blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. This, these ischemic nephrons react by increasing the rate of renin secretion. This would immediately cause blood pressure to rise. If the normal left nephrons did not become overperfused and reactively reduce their rate of renin secretion. When such patients begin to retain sodium, the ischemic nephrons do not suppress the renin secretion appropriately, and a form of hypertension develops that is both sodium-dependent and renin-dependent. 
PRA levels are not elevated, but they are not suppressed, and they are partly responsible for the high blood pressure. That is why patients with renin-dependent hypertension often have PRA levels that are in the normal range for subjects with normal blood pressure levels, and, but they respond to anti-renin system drugs with a fall in blood pressure. And that is our summary of how we see the renin-angiotensin system working in normal people and in the development of low renin hypertension and renin-dependent hypertension.